Okay, these are additional uh, comments. Uh, continuing with Dr. Chetna. Yeah, so the um, rhythmic breathing, which I was talking about in the previous um, audio, um, one more thing which they noted um, was how people could actually um, reach the uh, a super, um, not super, it's like almost like a state uh, which is very full of like a euphoric state which you get from psychedelics. Um, so when you do this breath work, you actually secrete DMT. So, so what is DMT? Um, dimethyltryptamine okay. and that is something which a lot of people take as a drug mm -hmm. like a psychedelic drug right. and um, so they, really, to get high to yeah. get uh, the euphoric state right. but when you do this form of breath work it's your own body generates the DMT mm -hmm. so you can get euphoric you can get high without any medication or without being addicted to drugs or without a negative side effect exactly of course this is all and it's a it's it's a great state to be in because that's where we want to be all of us want to be in that euphoric state and energetic state so that is the beauty of this breath breath work where you can do that also so you can have all the other breath work where you actually feel blissful but this is more than that so um, of course it comes with practice and you have to do it a certain period of time mm -hmm. to achieve that state but it does that and that's the beauty of it and the advantage in, of um, how you can use that before meditation is it allows you when you go into meditation whatever technique you use or tool after that is a deeper space where you're not connected to your body it's like an almost like an out of body experience where you uh, dissociate yourself in, from your current identity mm -hmm. um, as whoever you are because sometimes we associate ourselves to this being this personality and who we are because uh, and the and the idea of dissociating also is to really know your real nature, mm -hmm. and that is your true nature is just being blissful all so, the time. So I have a question here. You use the word dissociation, and of course, in the field of psychopathology, there is a defense mechanism called disso dissociation, which is maladaptive. You know, so that's a different thing, obviously, which is we're, we're, due to internal external stressor or stressors, there is a sense of dissociating from a particular phenomenon or relationship or whatever. How does the word dissociation, the way you're using it in the meditative, meditation context, how does that differ from this psychological dissociative state, like dissociative identity mm -hmm. disorder and other dissociative states? Could you elaborate on that? Yeah, so um, obviously I'm not a psychotherapist, but I, my idea of when you dissociate yourself from a situation or, uh, you know, um, circumstance or anything like that is almost you're literally not consciously thinking about it. Yeah. Um, so your subconscious takes all the brunt and it's still in there, but it's yeah. just that when the it's thought an escape. comes, exactly, it's an, escape, it's an yeah. escape mechanism. So that is not clearing, it's still there. So you in just fact, don't want to look another, at it. It's creating additional problems usually. Correct. So you're not looking at it, you're just doesn't don't want to look at it it's like you don't want to deal with things and all the things but what happens with that is the emotions and feelings which are associated with those are all always there with you they're yeah. not going anywhere right. and those are the things which cause diseases in the long run in the physical area so that mm -hmm. is different so now when you in the meditative state it's a different dissociation because what you do in there is you literally dissociating from your current identification which means like let's say me I am Dr. Chetna Kripalu mm -hmm. I am a physician I have achieved whatever you know become a doctor I have two children and this is my parents and this is my family the reason to dissociate is because sometimes we think that's all there is in life so the whole idea of meditation is to go into this state where you know that it's not just just that body and mind you have the body and mind but it is you are not the body and mind so that is what I'm talking about when I say dissociate yourself and this allows you to actually create new um, um, belief systems yeah. create your own destiny because that is the only time you know that your limited beliefs don't get to you and they're sabotaging so that is you are in your own way that's what it means when yeah. you're saying you're in your own way is you have these ideas but then you put it down like oh but I can't do it and I because of whatever beliefs you've created so this allows you mm -hmm. to get dissociate from limiting beliefs yes so that's very well explained I just have a couple of questions for further clarification 
would you say that the act of dissociating the way you're describing this, would you say that that is an effect of the various meditations that you are teaching, specifically the ones that you're teaching and the way you have conceptualized this, would you say that this type of healthy dissociation, which is a type of heightened awareness or a type of self-discovery, let's put it that way, perhaps, you know, what's the bridge between these two states? Because there's people who practice a variety of meditations and through Angel Wing, Trinity, etc., we're, you know, teaching different medita meditations, you're teaching them. Could you describe the bridge between the variety of meditations and this state of healthy dissociation, which is perhaps a state of observation of the mind-body complex. Would you talk about that bridge a little bit more? Yes. So, why don't we, or why cannot be, why cannot we um, observe ourselves, observe our thoughts when yeah. in a conscious state, and you don't have to meditate. You can sit and watch your thoughts, right? Right. right. It's a good question. Yeah. Right. Yes, you can, but what happens invariably is, you know, your mind is full of thoughts. So they come in between and they kind of take over in between. So you really cannot sit and watch um, and become, go to that space where it's neutrality or nobody, a sense of no one or you're not attached to anything. Okay, so that, that is so, why that's essential to so, go into that state. All right, so I have a question also on this point. You talked about the space of no thoughts or neutrality. You know, people who take a variety of different substances drugs, etc. Or even they go to casinos for gambling, or they might be involved in hypersexuality, or they might be involved in some other kind of, you know, experience of some sort, where they feel that they're in that no mind zone, right? How does the use of the substances or even non substances like gambling or sexuality or some other even like hyper exercise addictions, those kinds of things, how does all of that compared to the space that you're talking about, because they also are in a zone for a certain period of time. And so could you draw what the parallel is and what the difference is particularly between these two? Well, the things other than drugs, like exercise and, you know, gambling is an addiction, but it's not directly putting shopping in doctor's also, substance. Shopping, internet addiction, those, yeah. Correct. Texting. So, <laughs> yeah, so they're all addictions because, and the reason why it's an addiction is because we all want a space, we all want to periodically go into that space where you're not clouded by these thoughts and it's exhausting. Right. So that's why we have seen when you're focused in any kind of work you're passionate about, you forget everything, you have a state of it's otherwise called as a flow. Mm -hmm. um, but the thing is, it's not any different from that, but the, but the benefit of something like meditation and reaching that state is you carry it over the day. You carry it over weeks. You carry it over, let's say, um, you know, months. And you'll see a difference and evolution of yourself over the number of years as you go by. All the other fields, of course, not to mention the uh, addiction with drugs and you know, sexuality, yeah. food, yeah. Um, drink, alcohol, whatever, all yeah. these things have negative effects. Of course. Of, we don't have that in that. Now, the desire increases for that tolerance and effect increases. Correct. Also. So those are all, you know, we have side effects from it. The, the thing with this is it's only beneficial because what it does is, in my opinion, in my experience more than anything else, um, the best, the biggest or the be best benefit you get from this is a state of um, calmness, a state of bliss, a state of um, really some kind of, you know, I wouldn't say unconditional love. You have to reach a, up to a h very high state to get that. Mm -hmm. But really there is a, a kind of like a compassion which, imp which increases when you do that because um, you, I can see myself before. Mm -hmm. I mean, I was a quiet person didn't say anything um, before but I can say sense an inner dif inner um, a difference from my inner state from before yeah. and you don't react the way you did and plus I think that's one thing because of course you want you don't want to have to go up and down in your life which is what gives you the anger the frustration and all mm -hmm. those things but more than that I think what has happened is this is a great tool actually to um, r figure out or what you actually want to do. How can you yeah. design your destiny? How can yes. you um, make your destiny from now on? Mm -hmm. You are that powerful. Mm -hmm. One thing to realize is if you look around you, whatever you've amassed, whatever you achieved, whatever you've done, 
um, it's all because of you and you may not like it and it's all unconscious sure. probably. We have created, uh, Correct. created the present. But so the good part when you do it with, that, with this tool is that you are creating a destiny consciously. Mm-hmm. So you're undoing everything and actually w- doing what you actually desire in your life. And it's not um, just woo-woo. This is really, really true. This is definitely possible. And the more you achieve those states yeah. in meditation, the more you can say, okay. And I'm telling you even little things. You say, I want this today. When you g- get into that state, your body and your being and the universe cooperates immediately. Which is the law of attraction idea. Exactly. So that is why. But what happens when you do it consciously, like when you have a whim, like I want to do this, you're not persistent because you don't know you really want it from mm-hmm. the inside, from mm-hmm. the vibrational state. Mm-hmm. So that is why those things don't come true. So would you say that, uh, or would you elaborate on the breath work the various types of meditations that are being taught at at Angel Wing, uh, and how that connects with the state of one's desires, because desires are there. There's so many different innumerable types of desires. Would you be able to elaborate upon this interconnection about the the meditation approaches and the way desire itself changes? Because you know we kind of sabotage ourselves, kind of what you're trying to say, I think. But how can we bring desire to a much more uh, clear state where there isn't a negative desire, let's say? Or, I mean, I, again, I don't want to put words in your mouth. So, you know, would you just elaborate on the connection between the, the meditation techniques and desire? That's my general question, however you want to go with that. Yeah, so sometimes we have desires which are numerous one is you have your own desires um a lot of times we don't know what we want at all we just that's a big problem right there we don't we know a lot of times which we don't want so the first thing is when you meditate like that you'll have more clarity so what you can do with that is really write down two lists one list is what i don't want Mm -hmm. and then actually three lists um, how I would categorize this one is full of one list is all what are all the things I don't want because you first want to know what you don't want to create and that's a good idea mm-hmm. and then the other column is going to be you the desires you want but there is two categories on it meaning your own personal desires and then your desires because of your family friends and whatnot so you have to look at your own desires how much of it you really want to create or is it just like just a passing thing, fleeting thought like, oh, it would be nice if I had that. So that's the point when you have to really make a list and say, what do I really want? The other one, you have to really, again, um, cross off the things which are not yours because, and you're trying to do it because you're going to please somebody. <laughs> and of course, you want to you know, take care of people and you know, uh, make people happy, but some of them are not reasonable. So that's the dilemma you have in your head yeah. or in your mind where your desire is this, but this is not matching. And so that is why it's not, there's no clarity in your desire. Mm-hmm. So that's what it gives you. Ah, so, so this is a beautiful phrase, clarity in one's desire. That is a goal or that is a state of inner being that or in, inner realization that can happen, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, would you say like in the journey that you've taken so far, because a lot of this is coming from your experience also, as well as your medical expertise, et cetera. Would you say that there is greater clarity in your own desire system? Without getting into specifics, would you say that that's the case? Absolutely. Absolutely. Because there and, is... And, and, and what do you mean by clarity? What, what does that mean Because you? sometimes you have like so many things you want to do. And it's, you know, almost like an attention deficit. You know, we say, yeah. oh, let me do this. Oh, let me do that. I mean, so some of them are just fleeting things. Mm-hmm. And they may not actually be something you really want. Mm-hmm. But with... Uh, when you go into the state of meditation, you get more clarity on what do I actually want? And not that you should not have more than one. Of course you yeah. can have. But then it's more achievable when you put that in a, a, in a um, 
in in kind of a list or in in prioritizing you know in, in a priority list and say oh i can achieve everything i want but i have to do it one step at a time and one thing yeah. at a time because what happens a lot of times is it's very and it's happened with me like i've dabbled in so many things you know before yeah. and a little bit of here and a little bit of there and then eventually what happens is you don't feel you've accomplished anything and you still feel like you started off where you did. Kind of going in exactly. cycles. This is a, that's a serious problem for a lot of people. It is. They feel like they're just going in circles all the time. And that's why they call it attention deficit disorder. Mm -hmm. So, yes, we all have attention deficit uh, to some extent because there's too many things on our plate, there's too many things we want to do, and we don't know how to handle them. So mm -hmm. that is why it comes together and we feel like we don't have focus about things. So, so are, you, are you saying that desire is something that should be restricted because this is a big question the question of desire what desire actually is you know there's a lot that can be said about it obviously but without going into a whole lot of you know tangential things uh, desire has energy within it and i in for I, I hear from what you're saying is that meditation directly impacts the energy flow which then impacts desire so when you say that we should choose what we want or you know make a list these three lists right how is that to be done because even to clarify what is negative that should be thrown out what is positive that should be kept and what is you know spiritual or even beyond the negative positive could you elaborate on that for just from your perspective you know from the medical point of view from a breath work point of view because people have health problems I mean, nobody wants health problems you know so how do we you know just consciously throw that out from our system i mean so maybe you can elaborate on something so on desires are not bad at all because without desire you can't move you have right. to have desire that's to the, go yeah. anywhere that's to, the motivation exactly so and contrasts are necessary in life yeah. um, otherwise we would not appreciate the other side of it yeah. so desires are necessary for us to survive and actually energize ourselves and, and be enthusiastic about life right, very so true. there's nothing wrong with that very true. and what meditation does is actually because it integrates all your energies so it aligns yourself to your real nature so some of these negative desires actually fall off Mm -hmm. And that's the whole idea. But and what is a negative desire? I mean, negative we, desire is self-sabotaging. You may have tendencies, whatever you've gone through in your life, yeah. with people, with circumstances, yeah. things like PTSD. They may have a major emotional baggage they carry to yeah. Those are memories. carry with you. Those are, yeah. But they affect people a lot. So then they may have negative desires as to harm that person. They affect the current desires. Correct, yeah. and all of those. But when you realize that who you 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 know what kind of uh, being you are yeah. and with the energies been integrated you realize the so much of love within you so much of compassion within you so those desires are not important anymore they mm -hmm. become they become less important or they over time of course you have to work on it you but, know but what we generally see is that even people even doing some work like this they may come to a stage where the negative desires begin to diminish if the positive increases but then, after some time, a swinging back occurs into back into negative because of circumstances or situations. So this swinging back and forth, which you know in the addiction world is called the oscillation of perceived control. There's technical words for that. But this oscillation effect we see, and I think you've seen that even with people with physical health problems and and all that. You know, could you describe the oscillation effect and how to stop the oscillation effect? So. Yes, so the benefit of this, when you go into the state and you know how capable or not yeah. capable or what you are capable of actually and how you can create your destiny, it's it's life is a journey. So you're yeah. going to have these events, you're going to have these circumstances, going to happen. and you're going to have these thoughts, you're going to have these frustrations, but... So we need to accept that that's going to happen. Correct, because that is life. And it's okay, it's challenging yeah. in your life. You do fighting not, with that. You do not want it to be you know, all hunky dory, then it's boring, first of all. Yeah. So, but. And that's kind of like a fantasy also. That's not the reality of life. Right, exactly. So, we all want happiness all the time, but think about it like this. I know I'm, I'm digressing no, okay. a little bit. It's all right, it's okay. Yeah. So, we want to always go on a vacation <laughs> yeah, right. to, let's say, Barbados. Hawaii. Okay? Wherever. Um, and we go, we have such a good time, we have the time of our lives, and we come back and we say, oh my God, I wish I was there. But let's say somebody told you, gave you a house, gave you everything, and said, 
go and live in Barbados. Mm -hmm. Yes, one month, two months, maybe even a year or two, you would be happy, but then it becomes a new normal. So then it doesn't feel like it's a vacation, or it's a beautiful place anymore. It's like moving to your new house. Yeah. You feel the, the, the happiness or the joy, the excitement for a while, and then you're already looking for another house. Why does that happen? Because, but, now, this is, what you're saying is very true. I mean, you know, I certainly resonate with that, and I think anybody listening to this would resonate with it. You have to stay on topic because yeah. it keeps jumping. Yeah. There's, no, there's no end to the, yeah. to the whole link, right? So anyway, so, so there's a jumping of desires, which, which is all, that's another whole different topic. Maybe we'll leave that yeah. for another time. Let's just, let me just ask yeah. a final question for this recording. You know, the, the breadth importance of stability of breath is what you were talking about initially here. And then we went into many other things, uh, which are obviously all linked and you could keep going. But could you give like a summary of, uh, of what you have said so far uh, with regards to the breath itself uh, and the significance of breath and desire and thought, however you want to just summarize yeah, absolutely. that. So breath is not just inhalation and exhalation. First of all, this is all what we know. We know the respiratory system, the lungs are involved, the trachea, whatever, the airway. Yeah. We think, oh, we just inhale and exhale and we get a lot of oxygen, right. everything is circulating. No, it's much, 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 much more, more than that. So it is your life force. It is everything is connected to that life force. So that's why breathing in different forms, the way you want to, you know, whether it's intermittent hypoxia or rhythmic breathing, or breathing through one nostril and the other, and all breathing through, there's so many different varieties of breath work. What it does is it actually integrates like energy systems, as, and if you go to the energy systems, there's a lot of energy systems too. There's different, 14 different meridians. They are kind of little circuits in the body. So there's a lot of energy systems. So they work with the energy systems in your body yes. to integrate everything into one, your mm -hmm. mind, body, and everything. So that's where we want to get at, okay. and that's the advantage. So in my opinion, if you really want to think about how you want to look at like, like a kind of a broad picture about what is it that you want to, you know, uh, look at different uh, parts to put it together to have a good life is it's mind, body, and, you know, spirit, sure. obviously. But when you look at mind itself, it's about meditation, tools for meditation, breath work, energy work, and, um, you know, there is certain other th things. It's, it's more, um, more, um, uh, from Chinese medicine, we have these elements and everything. Mm -hmm. So you know we are part of the universe. Yes. So we have certain movements. Everything what we do in our body is a purposeful. So mm -hmm. even the way you move your fingers, and there is something called mudras. Yes. In um, you know in we call it in Sanskrit. This is again ancient. Holding your fingers in a certain way makes your body react a certain way. Sure. How you connect to the universe. So these are the things which integrate the whole mind part of it, mind and spirit, right, I would say. Right. So now when you come to the body, of course, you know, things like, for example, um, your nutrition, which is a huge, huge thing, exercise or movement, I call it, Expo going out in the, in the universe, meaning going out in the open, in the parks and, you know, in the um, environment to get the f be one with the nature mm -hmm. um, be get to the frequency of the nature um, because we're always indoors all these appliances everything all these are negative energies after a while and they're you have to be balanced so we want to go out and do that be soak yourself in the sun sure. um, and then human interaction being you know service is huge when you do yeah. something for others yeah. We feel good. Why is that? Because the connectedness. So you want to experience that connectedness more and more. Mm -hmm. And these are the things, if you put together, yeah. you have a good life. Very and nice. it's all fun because you don't want to look at it like, I have to do it. No, it's basically look at it. How can I put that as a routine mm -hmm. or make a routine in my life? Yeah. And you don't have to do it in a day. Nobody said that. But being aware of what things come to you and how you want to just take everything which comes to you as something which is the best thing which happens to you because yeah. of the state of evolution. And even the worst things which happen to you, it's all about your perception. If you start changing that perception, you will see beauty in it. Mm -hmm. And you'll see how your life actually is evolving till the last day you live. And it's never boring. Beautiful. It is always exciting and energizing and mm -hmm. you're learning every single day and evolving every sin single day and discovering more of yourself every single day.
Okay. All right. Thank you very much, Dr. Chetan. All right. So let me stop.